So I've done a bad thing. I've taken this stock AMD Wraith cooler and I've MacGyvered it onto an Intel CPU. Now there obviously isn't any official mounting hardware for the Wraith cooler on the Intel platform because why would there be? So I had to get quite creative about how to mount it. And honestly, the temperatures are really impressive, but I did run into a little bit of a very David does tech stuff snag when it comes to the actual thermal testing for the, for the cooler. But first, let's have a look at how we actually got the cooler onto the CPU. Now let's throw back to past David struggling to zip tie a Wraith cooler to an Intel i7-3770K. Or is it the K variant? Okay, so now let's get to mounting the CPU cooler. Now it's actually better to get the zip ties ready initially so that you can actually, um, you can actually just place the cooler down. So what I'm doing here is I'm leading the zip tie through and then making sure that they're lining up. I put this bit through because I obviously need more length here. And then there we go, they're stuck. Then I'm gonna cut this bit off like that. And then when you put it down, you work it through the hole here, uh, here, and then just like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then just like that, you've got a longer bit of zip tie available. And I'm going to do the same on this side, and then we can start getting the cooler over here attached to the CPU. So when you have the zip ties ready, you take the CPU cooler, and you line it up like this because that actually gives you room for RAM and so on. And then you place it down on the CPU in the way that the cooler should go. And then when you're satisfied with it actually being lined up properly, you run the zip ties and you're gonna have to come around to this side. I'm actually going to use the heat pipes to secure the cooler, uh, to secure the cooler down. So you run this through here and then super noisy dude on a motorbike. So I'm just tightening them quite loose initially and then I'm gonna tighten both sides and then we can tighten them down and see what happens. Can you stop trying to push the camera under my armpit? <laughs> this is as tight as they can go. Oh, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna oh, extend- so you shouldn't have cut them off. Yeah, I shouldn't have cut them off. So this is obviously the most polite way to treat hardware. Um, nice. Like that. That was good. And then we can do the same on this side. And then, hopefully, We've got a well-secured CPU cooler to a motherboard. Nice. I actually think that went better than I thought it would. Yeah, <laughs> it, looks pretty, it looks pretty tight. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off these bits and then we're, we're done. Hopefully the thermal performance isn't gonna be too bad. It's actually fairly secure, to be honest. Okay, now the only thing I hope is that the zip ties don't melt. <laughs> That'll be a bit of a disaster. But the thing is, I don't know how hot these cool these pipes get, and it's not gonna go above boiling, so I don't think it should melt. I'm actually very surprised with how neat this has happened, how neatly this has been done. Um, I'm quite interested to see the temperatures. Hopefully, it doesn't explode in a ball of fire, but I think it looks pretty great, actually. Now the obvious question is, 
why would you zip tie a Wraith cooler to a 3770K and or not K? Um, and the reason is because all of these components come from a bit of a junkyard setup. I did a couple of videos where I look at my brother's PC and a box of discarded components that he kind of left around. So he only had the Wraith cooler. He didn't have any other way to actually cool the 3770. So let's actually talk about the temperatures. Like how does it perform? If you're in the desperate position where you need to zip tie a Wraith cooler to an i7, how does it perform? Well, really well. I've been using this as a gaming setup for the last week, and honestly, it hasn't gone above 70 degrees while gaming, and that's in a hot South African summer. Now, I was using hardware monitor, and I, was, I wasn't using like a graph of temperatures, I was just using the max temperature it reached during the whole like Dota match or whatever it was that I was playing, and it didn't once go above 70 degrees Celsius. But I decided that I needed to push it a little bit harder, so I used IDA64, which I ran until I had five minutes of no temperature fluctuations which with an air cooler doesn't take very long and I was getting according to IDA 64 58 degrees under extreme load now the hardware monitor that was running at the same time told me it didn't go above 78 degrees so it means there's a 20 degree delta between what IDA 64 says and what hardware monitor says so if you're comparing it to the gaming results then use the hardware kind of mark thing i'll put a graph over here so it makes it more clear what i'm talking about now obviously the thing that you'd want to do is overclock the crap out of this four core cpu and see how much thermal headroom there is and i was going to do that i was convinced that this was the 3770k so when i saw that windows was kind of reading it as just a 3770 i honestly thought it was a read error um so i kept trying to overclock it and stuff kept breaking and then i realized i actually like researched the base clocks so this isn't an overclockable CPU, so unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to do that. But if you go by the IDA64 temperatures that I used um, while running this for an extended period of time, 58 degrees on this CPU is not very high, so it means there's quite a lot of room for overclocking. And there should be quite a lot of room because this cooler is quite beefy, and it's designed for an eight core CPU that runs at about four gigahertz. So a four core CPU running at about four gigahertz, which is the boost clock of the 3770, shouldn't provide any kind of issue. If I could overclock it, which I will at a later stage. And I know it didn't work out quite the way I wanted it to because I couldn't overclock the CPU. We couldn't see the absolute thermal threshold of the CPU on an old i7. The only reason that I didn't go out and buy a 3770K is because of its price point and its gaming performance. It's a very desirable CPU in South Africa on the secondhand market. So they're all sold out and there's just like posts everywhere of people looking for them. So I knew I wasn't going to be able to find one. And with that, it brings me to the end of another video. I have Instagram and Twitter, so you can go and follow those. I'll have them linked in the description below. Uh, my Twitter account is actually a really good way of being notified of new videos because sometimes YouTube takes its time on that one. And um, also go check out the rest of this playlist that this video is in. Um, it's called uh, Brahms Random Box of PC Crap. Almost forgot it there. There are videos leading up to this video and there's also a build coming soon where I put this PC into an interesting case um, that I build myself, hint hint. And yes, if you like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next one, bye bye.